and I'm happy to make an announcement. Next Tuesday, October 3rd, I have the pleasure of bringing to the floor legislation that will save lives, the Pain Capable Unborn, Unborn Child Protection Act. At a press conference with pro-life members of Congress this week, of Majority it's Leader Kevin McCarthy yeah. announces the it's House of Representatives of will vote members. on the Pain Capable Pain Unborn Pain Child Protection Act this coming Tuesday. The Pain Capable bill limits abortions after five months of pregnancy, the point when unborn babies can feel pain. It is time that, a rec that America recognizes and responds to the cries and humanity of these helpless little pain capable babies and the inhumanity of what is being done to them. The pro-life leaders were also joined by the Pickering family. Micah Pickering is a five-year-old boy who was born at 22 weeks and would be protected under this law. This bill is important to me personally because it's a life, it's a person just like my little son and it's important for people to realize that there is a person, you know, inside that womb. President Donald Trump made four pro-life promises last year, including that he would sign the Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act into law. House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy joins us now from Capitol Hill. Congressman, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me on the show today. The Pain Capable bill has previously passed the House of Representatives but was then blocked in the Senate two years ago. Are you optimistic this bill can now pass both the House and the Senate and be signed into law by President Donald Trump? I am optimistic because President Trump said on the campaign trail that he would sign this bill. And remember, there's only seven countries that don't protect children after 20 weeks. America's one of them. North Korea and China are two other ones. That's not a company we should keep. And when we had on our press conference Micah Pickering, who at 20 weeks was born, and today you look at that precious boy, you would never know the difference. How many other children deserve to be able to live? The pain the baby feels in the wounds at 20 weeks, when you can see their eyes, their ears, and others, they can survive, and we want to be able to protect them. Congressman, many pro-lifers are frustrated that Planned Parenthood has not yet been defunded. Is this announcement just a distraction from the failed pro-life congressional efforts so far this year? Not at all, because you remember in the House bill, uh, Planned Parenthood was defunded as we sent it. And in the Senate bill that they were taking up, it would have been as well. That could have become law. I'm frustrated, uh, as others across this country on the Senate, not getting this done. And uh, it, it is a goal in the House, and we're going to make sure we have it happen. We've got the votes. We passed it. Just as pain capable will pass the House, we need to put the pressure on the Senate to be able to sure, make sure this gets to the President's desk, because we have a President now who will sign it. As you mentioned, the United States is only one of seven nations to permit abortion for any reason after five months. We're in the same company as China and North Korea. Here, as a representative of the United States, what does that mean to you? It makes me sad. That's not our values. That is not our morals. We're a country that believes in the pursuit of happiness, protect life. And that's why this House will vote on pain capable next week and pass it. This bill argues because babies can feel pain at 20 weeks, abortion should not be permitted. Why do you think that's a convincing driving force behind this bill? Well, science proves it. And when you go, when you sit to make the argument, I would like to make it uh, earlier. But when I take the science, I take it to others across the aisle, I don't see how they argue against this. We watched little Micah Pickering, who continues to live today, born at 20 weeks. When he came out, he was the size, if you watched, about the size of an M&M package. And how many more babies would be able to live in this world? And the pain that would be inflicted upon them, they feel that pain. They have eyes, they have ears, their heart beats. How could that ever go on? That's why we will pass this bill next week, send it to the Senate, and we have a president now who wants to sign it. Do you think this is a piece of legislation that most Americans can get behind and support? Well, you look at the polling, 64 percent of Americans would support this legislation, I think even further. When you look around the world, and there's only seven countries that allow this activity to go on today, these are not the values of America to be associated with China and North Korea. We are better than this. 
and I look forward to proving that next week. Five-year-old Micah Pickering was at that press conference where you all made the announcement about the vote. What kind of message do you hope his presence sent? Well, Danielle, his mother, spoke for him, but you just look at Micah. That puts it in perspective. That, if others want to say they want to vote against this bill, how can you look at Micah and, and say that you would vote against it? Um, I think protecting these children, especially what the pain that they can feel at this age and the ability to survive and live, Micah proves it if anybody has doubt. House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy, thank you for your time. Thank you. For continued analysis, we turn now to our trusted pro-life expert. Marjorie Danenfelser is president of the Susan B. Anthony List and joins us now. Marjorie, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. You were at this press conference announcing the paying capable vote. The Susan B. Anthony List has been working very hard on this piece of legislation. How confident are you that the House and the Senate will pass it? Well, you're right that it's been the centerpiece of all of our activities. It was in the middle of our 2014 Senate races. It was in the middle of our um, efforts to elect this president. And it'll be in the center of the 2018 Senate races as well. It is that because it's, um, it's got such popular support. Mm -hmm. I am very confident that it'll pass the House. I'm very confident that there's a majority in the Senate. What I think we may come up short on, short of a of a mica miracle is that um, is 60 votes and 60 votes is required in order to break a filibuster so you know miracles do happen mm -hmm. we've got a little kind of a short middle ground list of people to be lobbying on this most of them are, are senators who are up in 2018 for election president donald trump when he was campaigning in that pro-life letter promised he would mm -hmm. sign the pain capable bill if it came to his desk you met with the president this week at a white house dinner has he reiterated that that's a priority to him? Oh yes, not only last night, but all of our interactions at the White House every week, mm -hmm. um, we're reassured that there, not only is there a commitment there, but their communication and advocacy, that is a turning point, of course, for this piece of legislation, because we, of course, had the Obama White House before now. Mm -hmm. Really having the White House takes it to a new level, a matter of public conversation now, where people mm -hmm. who didn't even know that this was legal now realize, oh wow, we don't even have a limit at 20 weeks, that's crazy. Right, a lot of people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. Is this bill going to be popular with Americans? From a political, strategic standpoint, how do you think this will go? Well, it has been um, wildly popular. We have polled this in every state where we have Senate races that are going on. We've polled it across the America. Many, many, many different polls across, across ethnic lines, across geographic lines, gender, age. Every way you look at it, this is a very popular bill. It spans from 50 to over 80%. And in politics, if you can find anything like that, you run with it. And you run with it at when, which is what we're going to do. One statistic we keep hearing over and over is the U.S. is only one of seven nations mm -hmm. that actually have these kind of laws that don't have bans on abortions at five months. Mm -hmm. As a leader of the U.S. pro-life movement, what does that mean to you? It means what does our country stand for? If we mm -hmm. can't stand for such a minimal protection of children at that certain point or any point, and that we are standing with North Korea and China and Vietnam mm -hmm. to fail to protect children after that point, we're not standing on our Constitution, we're not standing on our Declaration, and we're certainly not standing for Americans when we fail to do that. It is a mm -hmm. minimum bar promised in our founding documents that we that we protect human life. We can at least do this. Absolutely. We'll be closely watching that vote on Tuesday. Marjorie Danenfelser of the Susan B. Anthony List, thank you. Thank you.